In breaking news today, Taiwan's Defence Ministry says Australian warship HMAS Toowoomba has sailed through the Taiwan Strait. Now, Lincoln Parker joins me now. Lincoln, Thanks, is this antagonistic? What is this move about? Do I get no, I think it was the plan of action all along for the HMAS Toowoomba to transit through the Taiwan Strait. It is international waters. Any craft is well within its rights to transit through there, and it's probably the fastest way for HMAS Toowoomba to get to where they're going. So, absolutely. The, I mean, the Chinese will always get triggered and whinge about things like that because it's relatively close to China. But, you know, look, it's international waters at the end of the day and they're well within their right and good on them for doing it. A lot of focus has been on the naval divers who were injured. Uh, the Prime Minister and Defence Minister said some strong-ish things, but... Really, are we dealing with this issue in the right way that stands up for our values? I don't think so. It certainly appears like the Prime Minister covered it up because this incident happened a good few days before APEC 2023 in San Francisco and we saw the Prime Minister go over to Xi Jinping with a big smile on his face and shake his hands with, with two hands over it. And um, I don't think he did what uh, Ambassador Rudd said and that's do a pull aside... Um, where he raised the issue that our ship was in distress, it was disabled, it was in Japanese waters, um, and the Australian ship had communicated with a nearby Chinese destroyer and said, we are disabled, we are in distress, we've got divers in the water trying to unfoul our screws so the propeller had been caught in uh, fishing nets, and yet the Chinese destroyer came closer and then deployed its active sonar, which can be very... It could actually be fatal Absolutely. to divers. It can destroy all sorts of in, you know, parts within the body and even the brain. So, um, and, in fact, one of our divers was injured. And so for the Prime Minister to cover that up so as not to embarrass Xi Jinping of China, you know, I, I really... Does that say that the Prime Minister has Australia's backs and Australia's men and women in, in uniform? Does he have their yeah. backs? I, I just, you know, it really doesn't sit well. We hear the same phrase that he, he puts out all the time that ends in, you know, we will disagree where we must. But is he disagreeing? Because that is one example of probably an area where we need to disagree hard, not just back here in Australia in a media conference, but directly to the Chinese president. To his face and stand up for Australia, that's yeah. your job, and stand up for our men and women that are in harm's way in Japanese waters, no less. That's your job and you didn't do it. A lot of talk about different navies, the Chinese, the Taiwanese, the Australian. How strong is our navy? You look at any type of warfare and whilst I know the cyber element is huge, in the seas is somewhere that we may be forced to fight. How strong and tough is our navy? Well, this might be shocking to a lot of Australians as we live on the world's largest island. We should and we, we rely on seaborne trade for, you know, almost all of our goods and services that are imported and exported. And yet we only have three advanced warships. Three. That's it. Um, it was just announced that HMAS Anzac, which is a very old frigate and part of the frigate fleet that are still going, and, and that's all we have, has now been put up on into dry dock, which is essentially out of service mm -hmm. because the Navy can't crew them. Now, so we are really in dire straits with our not just our Defence Force but particularly our Navy um, and this government has taken money out of the defence budget and they're not doing anything, um, I guess, uh, positive with regard to trying to attract more people into the Australian Defence Force mm -hmm. and, and actually giving our Defence Force what they need to do their job. i tell you what, morale in the Defence Force, private conversations, is low. Yeah. It's terrifyingly low. Uh, a new Chinese base, the Antarctic, what does that mean for us? Yeah, so it looks... Look, if you look at China's strategic positions around Australia, you know, they've got comprehensive strategic partnerships to our north and Timor-Leste and to our east in the Solomon Islands, and they've got already four research stations in Antarctica, with a fifth being built as we speak. Research stations? R research. Are we confident that's what they are? Yeah, well, we're not. And, in fact, the largest think tank in the United States, the Centre for Strategic and International Studies, just released a report that said, in fact, um, those research, research stations mm. can... Um, and probably will be used for strategic intelligence gathering and monitoring of signals across Australia and New Zealand and our region. Now, this is at the very time where the Australian government is pulling funding out of our Antarctic division, of course, um, and so we're only beginning, getting weaker to our south and the Australian government needs to look at the threats that are now enveloping Australia and do something about it. Lincoln Parker, brilliant. Thank you so much for your time.